What is up, folks? Jorge Nito here. Thanks for coming over. Welcome back, guys. Today we have a really cool effect. It involves uh, some gaff work, as I have promised, and there's some crediting that I need to give. There's some proper crediting to a certain really big YouTuber, and so what I did is basically taken his idea and built on top of it. We're gonna go all. We're gonna go over all of the crediting um, and, and everything. But first, let's show you the effect. Start by giving the deck a couple shuffles and cuts, as long as the spectator feels comfortable. At this part in the trick, you explain to them that in most cases, a spectator will choose a card. But we will do that. But first and foremost, I'm going to choose one. The top card being the Joker. We're going to leave it just there for right now. That's my card. Now I'm going to go through it. I want you to reach out with one finger and just touch any card. Let's say they go with this one. You pull it out and show it to them. It's the two of diamonds. doesn't matter if I see. Um, it's actually not that kind of trick. So now what we'll do is place the two of diamonds inside the card box. Before I do that, I want to show you that it is completely empty. There's nothing in there, okay? Uh, a lot of people get weirded out about that if they don't see it. Uh, so the two of diamonds goes in there just like that. The idea is for these two cards to trade places. My joker ending up inside the box and the two ending up on top of the deck. Now most magicians at this point will cheat. And while they're talking to the spectator, they will go in the back of the box and they will extract the spectator's selection. We're not going to do that though. We're going to leave it just there like that because I have a different method and the method is this a little shake rattle and roll and with any luck the two of diamonds is now over here which should mean that inside this card box is my joker first and foremost I have to give credit where credit is due and it's definitely due to Chris Ramsey because this was his idea. Now this transpo that I'm doing, this is my idea, but the, the gaff that we're using is completely his idea. I'm going to leave a link in the in the description below. I think the video, he, uh, he has it titled, Vanish a Playing Card from Inside the Box. That's what he does. He takes a single card, he sticks it inside an empty box, and it vanishes. Um, and so it's really cool how he does that. Check it out. Uh, but his whole thing is this right here. What he does is take a duplicate card. I have one already pre-cut. And you're, you're taking the bottom flap and you're just simply lining it up and sticking it to the bottom of the flap. Now I've taken the time to, you know, take the little flaps. I have them glued down to the other. I did a lot of work on this. Just to try to make it work really well for me. And I pulled this off, um a few different times I've actually there was people that were they were really amazed by this effect and it's not that hard to do it's really simple you guys have probably already figured it out but yeah that's the convincer right there this is an otherwise empty card box save for the fact that this flap um, doubles as the spectators card so and now to hold this in place you know once you have this corner. Now, Chris Ramsey explains the crafting of that. That's really not what I'm doing here, but I'll just run through it. You know, you're going to, what I did was just glue it to the flap right there, stuck it there, let it cure. And then on this part, this is double stick tape. That is, that is so that it will stay. Um, I've been playing with it for a while, so it's starting to come up, but um, just use really good double scotch or double scotch, double stick tape. I use scotch tape. I try to go with brand name stuff like that because, you know, if I'm making a gaff, I want it to be the highest quality for me because I know how I am with cards, you know, abusing them and wear and tear and whatnot. And so I need something that's going to hold up. And scotch double stick tape has worked for me. I've tried the cheaper stuff. It does not compare. The reason that I'm using the Red Roses, uh, Black Roses deck, Oh, also, if you can get this bottom half of the cellophane on that, that is an even, that's an added bonus. That's super hard to do once it comes off, but it can be done. I'm using the black roses, red roses, uh, to illustrate this because this is all you would need. You could do this with any deck of cards, obviously, but just one 
pack of these will provide you with everything you need to not only craft the gaff, but also have everything you need for this transpo effect. You're, you'll have two sets of duplicates. Um, included with the red roses is a duplicate two of diamonds. That is what you would be cutting, you know. Obviously, you could use another deck and, you know, do it how you want, but I'm just saying, with just this under uh, around $10, I think it's under $10, you have everything you need to, to do this. Uh, so there's that. Now you'll use the other card, uh, the duplicate to this one, as your force card, okay? This is your other set of duplicates. Normally, I would include something different than Joker's, but I just wanted to illustrate that, hey, you could do this with Jokers. Most people um, aren't suspicious when it comes to Jokers if you just refer to it as, I'm going to use the Joker, the Joker, definite article in front of Joker. Um, you never want to refer to uh, the Joker as, you know, the, the Jokers or the set of Jokers. Anyway, okay, so there's your two um, identical sets. So you'll start by taking... Uh, the Jokers, placing them on top, and the Force card on top, you can go into any type of shuffles, false shuffle, or just regular shuffles, retaining the top stock, uh, and you just force the card on them in whatever way you, you see fit. Uh, so the one that I use, I learned on Jay Sankey's channel a long time ago, and that is they reach out, they touch a card, it's indifferent obviously, but when I come in to take the card out, I'm actually pushing it in, and stripping the top card away. At the same time, I'm wrist killing. So there's a few things happening here. That way it looks like you're pulling it straight out, right? Um, so that's how I, that's a force that I like to do. It's easy to flash if you're not careful, uh, but you know, just in the moment, usually a spectator will not catch you. So, but any force will do. Uh, but you have to make sure that this is the card they wind up with. Now, at this point, you want to switch it for one of... Oh, I'm sorry, shoot. Before you even start the trick, before you even force the card, after you do the series of shuffles, you want to do it. You want to start by saying, this is how I do. Uh, I, I get a double lift. I do a get ready, have a double, and I say, you know, I'm going to make choose a selection before the spectator in this case you know, and I do a double lift and say, I'm just going to be lazy and choose the top card. It looks like it's the Joker. Uh, turn it over. And so now you're ready to force the card, which is still on top, right? So you go ahead and force the card at this point. So you have that. And so once they know their selection, you want to kind of draw attention to the card box. And whenever you're able, you want to execute whatever kind of switch, um, you want, you know, so I just did a top change. So you're going to switch out their two for an identical joker and say that you're going to place their two inside the card box. And it's important to show that it is indeed empty. I throw it in there just like that. Go ahead and shut the box. From here, I tell them what's supposed to happen. Uh, cards trading places. There's winding up over here, my Joker winding up in here. And this is what I go into, and this is pattern that Chris Ramsey uses as too. He says, you know, most magicians will, you know, while they're talking to the spectator, they'll actually go in the back of the box, and I actually let them see it before I, you know, do the extraction, or, you know, show them. I'll say they'll go in the back of the box here, and then I want to make sure that I... I obfuscate their view when I pull that down, right? I don't want them to see that. So I go from here to here, and that sound kind of does something for it too, and that's a good thing in my eyes. So I don't want them to see this just yet because I want them to think that I'm taking the flap down and I'm, I'm going in here to get the card when all I'm doing is just kind of, you know, making it look like that. And so when it comes into view for them, I'm just kind of pulling up with my fingers like this as I'm coming down. So coming down, coming up. And I say that, look, uh, yeah, magicians, they'll go ahead and, and take it out the back door, so to say. And so I go back to this point and I say, we're not going to do this. I act like I'm just tucking it back down in there. You know, that's all I'm doing. 
we're not going to do this. We're actually going to leave it in there. I close it up. I act like I'm pushing in. I'm letting you guys, this is the exposed view. I close it up. I make sure it's good and sealed. And I say the, I, but I, you know, I have a different method. And my method is this. A little shake, rattle, and roll. And with any luck, it should be done. And it is because all the dirty deeds are done. The two now being on top, which means the Joker is in the box. So as you guys know, this is mainly, you know, a, a sleight of hand channel. I focus on sleight of hand utility moves, but I do enjoy gaff works and I actually do quite a bit of gaff stuff and I enjoy doing it. And so this is just a fun idea. All credit goes to Chris Ramsey because this is a brilliant idea. It really is. I've made several of these over I want to say the years, but yeah, I think it's been two years since I, I viewed his video. I have to check it out. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Continue to have a great December. Merry Christmas. Uh, all the cheer and blessings I hope you guys experience during this month, family and friends. So Jorge and Nito here, little uh, card box transpo idea. See you back here next time.